Hey everybody, it's now Sunday afternoon and I want to shoot a little follow-up video to a video I shot yesterday about a lighting project I'm working on. I will go ahead and attach a link to that video in case you want to watch and you'll get all the details of what my actual uh, plan was, but long story short is I was going to take a bunch of Cree light bulbs, Cree LED light bulbs, break them apart and then reassemble them into sort of an LED grow light panel and we were going to use it to replace the LED grow light that I have on this tank now which is very high powered uh, grow light for all of these relatively low light need plants and so I started tinkering around with it yesterday I made a prototype out of bulbs that I got from Walmart great value brand bulbs and while it was a very successful trial run and prototype when I got into working with some Cree bulbs I found that it was not quite the same story so I want to actually talk about what I found once I got into looking at the Cree bulbs first of all I went over to the Home Depot to actually uh, purchase some inexpensive Cree bulbs I had ordered some from Amazon but changed my mind, I decided to cancel the order and then go physically look at what they had over at the Home Depot. And they have a fairly wide selection of Cree light bulbs. And when I started looking at them, I found that there's a significant price difference between the 60 watt equivalent. Now, when we get into talking about the brightness and all that of these light bulbs, uh, the equivalent brightness is the uh, how much light the same bulb would produce if it was an incandescent. So the 60 watt equivalent is supposed to replace that 60 watt incandescent bulb of old and so on and so forth. The actual wattage is something different. So the 60 watt equivalent bulb actually only draws eight and a half watts. It's a very low wattage bulb and it's also a very low cost bulb. Uh, you can get a two pack of them for three dollars and some change or something. So I looked and I saw 75 and 100 watt equivalent bulbs where the wattage was stepped up and therefore the light output was stepped up significantly. And it was only about a dollar and a half, maybe two dollars more, was, you know, around five dollars. And so as I was walking out, I started scratching my head because that something didn't seem right. I realized it was one bulb, not a two pack. So two of the 60 watt bulbs cost two dollars less than one of the 75 watt or 100 watt equivalent. So that leads me to believe that there is something significantly different within the technology of the bulb itself. Um, eight and a half watts, the 60 watt equivalent bulb, that's probably like the thermal threshold or something where beyond that, if you step the wattage up any higher, you now have to get into more sophisticated heat mitigation or something like that is going on inside the bulb itself. And that's why that price jumps up so significantly. Uh, the 75 and 100 watt equivalent bulbs are both the same price. So again, it's just a little bit of a different uh, wattage running through them, but the guts of the light, so to speak, are the same. So Having said all that, I also saw that they have spotlights and they have floodlights and they all uh, are rated at 90 plus CRI. And if you're not familiar with what CRI is, I will try to find another one of my videos and do a link right here. But CRI basically tells you the quality of the light. The higher that number is, it's a, it's a percentage number. So a 90 represents 90% 90 of what natural sunlight would look like uh, in a nutshell. So the cheapy bulbs that I bought at Walmart to start my project with were 80 CRI. Again, it's the equivalent of like overhead office lighting. Um, you know, just cheap, uh, cool white bulbs, basically. Uh, cool white fluorescent bulbs would be about the same quality of light. Not very good but inexpensive and easy to work with. So good, again, good successful prototype. But once I got into these Cree bulbs that have a very high quality light, I again decided I was gonna start with the low budget 60 watt bulbs before you know I came home and started breaking them apart. Uh, it's not like I can take them back and say, well, this one didn't work for my project after I've smashed it to pieces. Uh, and so I found some very significant differences between the Cree bulb and the Walmart or Great Value brand bulbs and the Cree bulbs became very difficult, almost impossible to work with. So 
Hang on here for a second. Let me get my hands adjusted here. Uh, first thing right off the bat is with the, this is one of the Cree bulbs, and this is actually a 2700K. Uh, first off the bat, when you go to break, well, let's start with the other end, because the other end is where we start. I always break this off first, and then I break the uh, metal off the other end, because you want to be able to get a good handhold on it when you're breaking the plastic off. You put the plastic in a vise and then squeeze it and just snap it off. So having a good handhold, you don't want this in your hand. You want the metal screw base. So break the globe off first. And this was one of the third or fourth one I tried. And you can see I still wound up breaking the housing. It was so difficult to get the globe off of these Cree bulbs that this plastic housing, it's like a brittle plastic, and it broke apart uh, to the point where one of them was completely unusable. Uh, another one had a huge chunk broken out of it where the heat sink was completely exposed and then I got a little more delicate with it and I wound up pulling this one out and we only got that degree of breakage. So there's that to consider and then this is significant. This is the 2700K and you can see where the two leads that come out are soldered to the face of this chip and they are then held in place. Well, those leads are attached to these guts. And on the 5000K, they're just two metal points that stick out. They're not attached to anything. So when you break this end off, these wires are actually attached to the metal contacts. And, you know, so when you break that off, you actually pull this and it pulls it right out of the face of it. And it no longer works. So, on the couple times I tried to jiggle it to get it back in there, I heard a huge popping noise and smoke came out of it, or the smell of smoke anyway came out of it. So, both of those went in the trash. Um, so, the 2700K, you can at least get it apart, and you can get it to where you can wire it up, and it will actually work. I have plugged that in. I've stuck those, you know, right directly into the socket, and it does light up, but the metal is also connected to the plastic here. So when you break it apart, unlike the Walmart bulbs that leaves the plastic intact, so all you have is some wires sticking at the end, this just breaks apart. And so you've got all of the guts are sticking out and everything. So again, it's usable, it does work, but I don't know how to actually get this metal off without breaking the plastic off. It was, it was connected to it, it was, it was bonded to it. So those were some of the problems that I ran into pulling the uh, Cree bulb apart. I don't have any of the Walmart bulbs in my hand or, you know, they're all basically put into that panel I built. And I didn't have any problem with them at all. They're cheaply built, so when you break the metal off, it just slides off of the plastic. The leads are not actually connected to anything. They're just in contact with it. So they just slide off, and you've got loose wires available to work with. <laughs> so oddly enough, the, the more poorly constructed bulb was the one that was really easy to work with. So if you wanted to do something like that, and you wanted to use lights that were just going to be used for a simple grow light project you wanted to just start some seeds or grow some basil or you know something that didn't have real high light requirements that would be fine what i want here is very high light quality not because these plants have a very high light need but because i do this a lot i stand here with a video camera and i shoot video of this tank i also enjoy looking at this tank and so i want that real high light quality i want to use those cree lights but when I saw the selection at Home Depot, you know, it, it took a while to sink in. I'm so used to thinking about LED grow lights in panel form. It just it never crossed my mind that I don't have to build a panel to have nice lighting on this tank. I can just buy some spotlights and some floodlights and position one here, one there, and, you know, two over there. And it's, it will be nicely lit. I don't have to make a panel. So I'm now rethinking the lighting on this tank all over again because I never stop thinking about lighting. If you haven't picked up on that yet, I'm just absolutely fascinated by lights and lighting and everything that has to do with lights. Uh, the idea that these plants are taking air and light and turning them into all this just 
blows my mind. I just, that absolutely fascinates me. So I love lights. I love talking about lights. And I am actually later going to be shooting a video about correlated color temperature and the whole 6500K versus 2700K discussion about what do plants really need and what cycle of their life do they need those colors and so on and so forth. So I am planning on doing a video about that. Uh, but this was just meant to be a follow-up video for the one I shot yesterday. I just, again, I wanted to talk about what I found when I broke into those uh, Cree light bulbs. I was really surprised at the way they were very, very difficult to work with. And again, the 5000K bulbs, and those are your only two choices, 5000K or 2700K, uh, just like the Walmart bulbs, those are your only two choices. You get either the daylight or the warm white, and that is the daylight is 5000K and the warm white is 27 hundred and um you know the, the the cree bulbs those good quality bulbs when you break that 5000k apart it will come apart i don't know how to take it apart unless maybe you solder those leads first before you break the metal off yourself at that point that's more work than i'm willing to get into so there you go i feel like i'm starting to ramble i've gotten my point out there make sure you're subscribed that way you don't miss anything i got coming up uh, again i will be talking more about lighting and correlated color temperature and plants needs and all that kind of stuff so thanks for watching this one and i will see you real soon on the next one